Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. He argues with the security guard. He's trying to haul me out of there. And eventually Snoop Dogg has me come up to the stage. He takes the flip stick. He says he's putting one on his phone, calls me a genius. He said, this is going to be the thing that changes the world. Akeem Shannon recently made a big impression on ABC's hit show Shark Tank. But that kind of triumph is nothing new to an entrepreneur who sees the moment to wow Snoop Dogg, as he explained on St. Louis on the Air. Uh, you know, I've, I've been pretty lucky, uh, but, you know, I just call it success because success is just when preparation meets opportunity. And I always come prepared. I'm Sarah Fenske. This is St. Louis on the Air. And before we move on, I want to remind you that the biggest source of St. Louis Public Radio's funding comes from listeners like you. Because you value what you hear on St. Louis on the Air, donate today. Go to stlpr.org slash donate. That's stlpr.org slash donate. Shark Tank features ordinary people pitching their products to celebrity investors. St. Louis-based Akeem Shannon made quite an entrance on the Emmy Award-winning show last Friday. I gotta be honest, I didn't come here to rap. Came to talk about my business, as a matter of fact. Might start a feed frizzy as I spit on this track. So I asked all the sharks, sit back and relax. Flipstick is the brand. If you already heard about it, raise your hand. It's a kickstand on demand with Flipstick. Gravity is under your command. Let me repeat for those who missed it. To any flat surface, your phone will stick. Get it wet, but the stickiness will persist. Tell you how I thought it up if time permits. Flipstick is the brand. If you already heard about it, raise your hand. It's a kickstand. <laughs> and that was Akeem Shannon on the episode of Shark Tank that dropped last week. Akeem ended up getting the investment he sought, and it turns out that could mean some good things for St. Louis. And so here today to discuss how and why is Akeem Shannon. Akeem, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Sarah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and congratulations on your investment. Um, the judges loved your rap, but you must have been nervous going in. Were you worried it could backfire to lead off in that way? Yes, I mean, it definitely was nerve-wracking. I actually went skydiving about two days after uh, appearing on Shark Tank, and I'll tell you, it was about half as scary <laughs> as standing in front of the doors, waiting for those doors to open. Uh, but as soon as the beat dropped, I walked in, and I knew I had it. Uh, I had actually performed a similar rap for another celebrity, uh, Diddy, Puff Daddy, oh. uh, to get his attention, to get him to buy flipsticks. When I was supposed to participate in his pitch competition, it was closed, so I wrote a rap, and I ended up rapping my pitch to him instead. So I knew if it could if it could win him over, I had a good feeling it went over the sharks. Man, so you are just winning over celebrities all over the place. This is this is some <laughs> impressive work here. <laughs> Listen, you, you got it. Sometimes you got to get in where you fit in. <laughs> so your pitch, I mean, first of all, you came in with this great high energy pitch, but then you immediately hooked. You know, even people who might not have been like, oh, I'm loving this rap. It's such a fascinating project product here. You. Told the judges that the technology powering this flip stick is based off the foot of a gecko. You got to tell us what you mean by that, because that is some crazy stuff right there. Absolutely. So back in the 70s, NASA started doing research on these reusable adhesives that were based off CT, which is the microscopic hairs on the bottom of a gecko's foot. Hmm. Uh, And so what we created was a synthetic CT um, based off of that same NASA research in order to put on the back of your phone. And the way I was actually introduced to this type of technology was from my uncle, who's an engineer at NASA. Now, he's an electrical engineer. He was working on a project, and he was simply going to use it to organize wiring. But as he was telling me about this reusable adhesive at 3 a.m. in the morning... (laughs) In late October 2017, I was like, man, I could use this adhesive and just slap it up on the wall somewhere and and use it on the back of my TV and save myself a lot of time for mounting it. And while I knew that wasn't quite practical, 
uh, over the next few weeks, I kept thinking about it. And I said, you know what? This may work on a phone. So I taught myself to write a patent. Uh, I wrote a couple of trademarks, and we launched a Kickstarter in early 2018. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's kind of the origin story. That is pretty remarkable, I got to say. You, you go from this idea of using it to hang TVs to writing a patent. And when, and when you say writing a patent, you don't have any legal training. You just taught yourself how to do this? Absolutely. YouTube. YouTube is a wonderful thing. You can learn almost anything there. No legal training whatsoever. At the time, I was actually dating someone who was in law school, and they wouldn't do it for me. They're like, I don't think I can do this for you. I don't know enough. I said, you know what? I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to figure it out on my own. Uh, So, yes, I wrote my own provisional patent. And a lot of people, you know, you think it's very intimidating, but a provisional patent, it only took me about two days to complete. Um, And it's very inexpensive. So if you have an idea, it's definitely worth protecting and you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to do it. So you had this great idea. You have this great pitch. You walk into Shark Tank. You're a bundle of nerves, but you nail the rap. And then, you know, the judges are initially, or the celebrity investors, they're initially very into this. But then there's kind of like a moment where it seems like they're kind of second guessing themselves a little bit. Mark Cuban flat out tells you that your sales suck. At that point, were you just petrified? <laughs> Listen, I was. I was nervous. I was very nervous. Um, so, you know, Kevin... Uh, who they call Mr. Wonderful, who was probably the toughest shark, had already given me an offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but I, I, as you mentioned, I really wanted Lori going into it. That's who I came for. And so I was trying to let Lori speak because all the boys on the panel were over speaking her and not letting her get her question out. Uh, and so, you know, it's going on. And you know, uh, Mark asked me, you know, well, what were your sales last, last month? And, you know, we were very heavily focused on retail. We were in the St. Louis Galleria Mall. We were in the West County Mall. And when those shuttered, you know, our sales fell through the floor. Mm-hmm. So our sales were not impressive to Mark. And at that point, he said, your sales suck. Then, then Kevin was like, well, you know what? Now that I know that, I'm going out. <laughs> so then all I had left was Lori. So she, she used a little bit of leverage to get to get an extra 5% on the deal. But uh, I know I made the right decision. But it was definitely nervous. Uh, nerve-wracking for sure. But So you mentioned you were hoping for Lori all along. This is Lori Grenier. She's known as the queen of QVC. What made you so interested in having her be the investor in your Flipstick? Well, you know, Flipstick is a visual product. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a device that lets you stick your phone on any surface so you can use it in the car for GPS, take hands-free pictures, hands-free videos by sticking it to the wall, um, or, you know, on the long haul plane ride, you can stick it to the back of a seat. But it's very visual. People have to see it to understand what it is. It's not something that you're going to pick up off the shelf and say, oh, yes, I was looking for this. Mm-hmm. And as, she, as you mentioned, she's the queen of QVC. She knows how to sell things on video and particularly consumer products. One of the things she always says is, I make millionaires. And so working with her, having a consumer product that is very visual that I think will do very well on QVC – was the perfect match for us. So is Flipstick, I got to admit, I haven't watched QVC lately. I need to do that. I know there's great products (laughs) on there. Are you on QVC at this point? So coming soon, coming soon. Okay, so that is the plan. You're going to go that, that this is basically a direct to customer route. Absolutely, yes. So we're, we're absolutely working on retail partnerships as well. A couple of big uh, phone carriers that we're, that we're talking to um, and a, a couple big big box stores. But ultimately, for people to get that initial traction, they have to see it. They have to understand exactly what it does. And once it becomes a household name, then, yes, you'll be able to go into Target or Walmart and just pick it up because you already know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But until that point, the direct-to-consumer model for us seems to be the winner. Well, this all sounds very exciting, and I got to echo something that I saw as I watched this episode on Shark Tank. Damon told you you were just the luckiest. You do seem like the luckiest. (laughs) Do you think he was right about that? Well, he was certainly right about that. Uh, you know, I've I've been pretty lucky, uh, but, you know, I just call it success because success is just when preparation meets opportunity. And I always come prepared. And when I see the opportunity, I pounce on it. I'll give you another example. When I, I had wrote the rap, I rapped at Diddy's event. They invited me to L.A. and they bought a ton of my product to give away at their L.A. at their L.A. event. And so at the L.A. event, I go out there. They let me actually pitch my business for real. End up losing to a 12-year-old girl who made hot sauce. Oh, she was, no. She was fantastic. <laughs> and she was 12. How could you, how could you compete with that? Uh, but uh, the next day at the, at the event, 
I have my flip sticks I, I, t- and, and Snoop Dogg is on stage and I'm trying to get his attention. They're like, no more questions. I take my phone and I just slap it to a pillar. He sees it and he starts to freak out. <laughs> There's a phone on the wall. There's a phone on the wall. He argues with the security guard. He's trying to haul me out of there. And eventually Snoop Dogg has me come up to the stage. He takes the flip stick. He says he's putting one on his phone, calls me a genius. He said, this is going to be the thing that changes the world. So just little things like that, I have to say I am pretty lucky. <laughs> because You are not just pretty lucky. To me quite often. Yeah, you are the luckiest. You go into pitch Diddy and you end up persuading Snoop Dogg. Like you just fried a bigger <laughs> fish than the fish that you thought you wanted. That's amazing. Yeah. Listen, it seems to it seems to always go my way. I will say that. We're talking today to Akeem Shannon. He is the inventor of the flip stick. He just had a very memorable star turn on Shark Tank where he got um, an additional investment in this product, which apparently we're going to see soon at QVCs. Um, and this is just so exciting to hear about. Um, and, and look, talking to you today, you seem like a guy who's willing to take a risk. You go for, you know, you do the rap as you're making the pitch to investors or you slap that phone up on the wall and and possibly anger snoop um you also mentioned skydiving have you always been such a risk taker well one thing that i learned from reading one of my favorite books the alchemist is that you know without any risk there's no reward and so when you're taking calculated risk and that risk is really investing in yourself it's almost always going to be worth it because most of the things that we want in life we don't achieve them until we get past that brick wall or that big wall of fear that stops us from from moving forward. And as I've been on this journey for Flipstick, I've learned that always on the other side of that, the biggest fear that you have is usually the next milestone, the next plateau that you're going to get to. And so since learning that, you know, if I feel it in my gut that it's the right move and the right decisions to make, the right decision to make, then I, I go for it. Uh, one of my favorite investors uh, once said, I don't, I always go with plan A. Like, I never have a plan B, C, or D. It's like, we go plan A, and when plan A fails, we switch to our second plan A. And that, <laughs> to me, is, is, is a very good philosophy to live by. I understand you have a little bit of knowledge of having to switch to that different plan A. Um, you talked on Shark Tank about how a pivotal moment in your life was when, you know, you were attending Howard University, you lost your scholarship. Was that kind of the humbling moment you needed to, to have to pivot? Absolutely. You know, I went to school, had a full tuition scholarship, um, was an academic scholarship, and I didn't hit my grades and I had to come home. It was devastating. Uh, You know, it was one of the hardest phone calls to my parents I ever had to make. Uh, But when I came home, I I said to myself, you know, no matter what, I have to be making as much as my friends who are going to be graduating college in, you know, two and a half to three years are making. (laughs) And by the time they were graduating, I was working in a Fortune 500 company in sales, making, you know, close to $100,000 a year. So I achieved that goal. And, you know, who knows where I would have ended up if I had stayed in school. I was studying engineering. Hmm. So it's always funny how it comes, it all comes back around. Uh, But, you know, it it definitely set me up for uh, the entrepreneur lifestyle uh, and, and just having that passion, having to come home. So it was, it was most certainly sobering, uh, but also taught me that, Hey, even when you mess up and fail, it's not the end. You know, mm-hmm. life is going to be full of failures, but a failure is either a roadblock that's going to stop you from moving forward or it's just a lesson. Uh, and so I chose to, to look at it as a lesson. Well, so now here you have the flip stick. This thing is just poised to take off. I understand you want to make this company very much a St. Louis thing. What are you planning as far as that goes? Absolutely. So we just opened up a 2,500 square 2500 square warehouse and office in the T-Rex building located downtown. Uh, we've already hired about seven people. Uh, we're looking to hire 30 within the next 12 months. Uh, it's super important for me to be grounded here in St. Louis. It's where I grew up. It's where I'm from. And I think the city is just ripe for potential and growth right now. Uh, one of the other big things we want to do is a lot of people want custom flip sticks. You know, they want to put grandma's face on it. Right now, we only take custom orders from from companies, you know, we'll, mm-hmm. we've worked with a lot of companies around St. Louis that want to use them as promotional items, but we want to also be able to offer people, you know, that customized just for grandma type of flipstick uh, service. So being able to bring our production right here back to St. Louis is going to be fantastic, and it's going to allow us to do stuff like that. It's really, so we can put grandma's face on a flipstick going forward. You're promising <laughs> us that here today. 
Yes. In the next 12 months, you will be able to put lipstick on grandma's face. That's a guarantee. Wow. Well, we could take that to the bank. This has been a very <laughs> exciting episode of St. Louis on the Air. I'm actually, I'm really excited to hear about um, how these plans are taking off. And it seems like you have the energy and the enthusiasm to, to take this company big. And so it's exciting to hear about. You think someday you're going to look back on this like, man, you know, I can't believe that I, I was fighting over fi- a 5% stake in this company. This is now worth billions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that, that is the plan. That's the plan. Well, Akeem Shannon, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and and wish you the best of luck as you continue to go down this path. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day, sir. And one last question. If people want to get a flip stick today, do you have a website where they can buy it right now or do they need to wait for QVC? So they can buy it today. We've sold a lot of flip sticks in the past couple of days. (laughs) So you can get it at getflipstick.com. So that's G-E-T-S-L-I-P-S-T-I-K. Dot com. There's no C in stick. Okay. So get flipstick.com. Is listening to an episode of St. Louis on the Air part of your daily routine? If so, suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help new people discover our show. Thank you. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.